Hi, my name is Noah and I'm a year 3 student currently studying at NUS Medicine. Today I want to share with you my approach to note taking and organization for med school. So many of the apps here can just be used for note taking in general but all the examples that I'll be using will be more specific and relevant in a medical context. So I feel that in the first two years of medical school because you're kind of just looking at textbooks, the main thing that you want to learn is how to learn. And so my, the aim of this video will be to help you develop your own studying and note-taking process. In this video, I'll be talking about four main things. Firstly, the note-taking apps that I think are the best to use. Secondly, it will be how to use these apps. Thirdly, it will be my studying process from start to finish. And finally, it will be kind of a side point on how you can best utilize the iPad to help you study. The first app that I want to talk to you about will be OneNote and the reason why I think OneNote is good for you to store all your lecture slides and annotate them is because it has really good uh, organization systems. So if you look to the screen now, for example, you are able to create uh, notebooks and for notebooks I usually name them as the general topic that I'm going to be studying such as um, anatomy or in this case pathology. So if we go into the pathology notebook, we are able to create further sections so the sections is usually where you want to split it up into the different topics or in this case the different systems. So for example here we have the pathology of the respiratory system or pathology of the gastrointestinal tract. So from the sections you're able to further create pages. So pages is essentially where I would store my slides and I also number them in order of when the lecture was given. So, if, so you can see here we have like the GIT 1 to 4, the liver 1 to 3 so on and so forth. So within the pages, I would upload the slides and you can do that by simply uh, uploading the file and from there, you're able to annotate the slides or even type huge chunks of notes as we see here. So the reason why I think OneNote is so good for uh, annotating slides is because not only are you able to type, uh, type in chunks of text like this, you're also able to kind of write out on the slides which I would do with a tablet or iPad if you have one. Um, but in general, I think that it's good because it's really really easy to organize your notes. Yeah, and so now we can move on to the second app, which would be Notion. So the reason why I think Notion is good is because it basically allows you to organize your notes also really easily, but primarily I would use it because of this specific drop-down function, which I will now show you. So for example, um, let's say I have some notes on colorectal cancer. Uh, I can easily see the main, sub, uh, the main headers that I want to be looking at in this particular set of notes. So you can see here I have definition, pathophysiology and so on. And I can drop it down and further see the categories that I want to type my notes in. So the reason why I like this so much is because I think that when you make when you're making notes, it's very important to know exactly where your information is categorized and because for me, I think that when I read something, I want to know exactly what is it related to, why am I reading it, and why am I learning this, and how can I apply it. So having that subheader easily viewed above the notes for me, uh, it's what uh, makes Notion such a great note-taking app. However, to be honest, I did not really use this in year 1 and year 2, and the reason for that is because I feel it's easier to directly annotate on the lecture slides. However, now that I'm in year 3, there aren't really many lectures anymore which is why now my primary note-taking app is Notion. So for the last app I want to talk about, it's actually Anki, and I think it's the bread and butter of what a medical student uses to memorize the ungodly amount of information that's thrown at us by our profs. So the reason why it's so good is because not only does making the, the flashcards themselves help you to um, revise the information that you're trying to learn, but the way that it presents it to you is also really good because it implements the concept of active recall. So if you don't already know about active recall, you can easily find out more about it on YouTube from the, from the likes of Ali Amdao. But to give you a brief overview, overview, what active recall is, is it's a way to memorize new information by quizzing you on certain questions and asking you so that you have to actively recall the information from your brain rather than to just uh, read a set of notes and have everything go in one year and come out the other. 
So now let me show you how Anki works. Basically, you are able to go into a deck. Uh, you see many deal because I haven't touched this app in a few months. Anyways, uh, you go into, let's say I'll have uh, CVS Pathology and then I'll click study now and then it will, it will show me these cards and then I'll show, uh, I'll try to answer the question in my head and then once I'm sure of my answer, I'll press show answer and then I'll compare my, the answer in my head to the answer that I typed out when I was able to refer to the notes and based on how close it was, I'm able to choose um, when I want to see it again. So basically the concept is if you are unable to remember the answer to a question well, it will come out more often and it will cause you to repeat uh, that memory process more and in doing so it will help you to memorize information that you are weak at. So yeah, that's it for the apps. So in general, the reason why I choose Notion as well as OneNote over other generic note-taking apps would be its ability to sync information over multiple devices. So the way that OneNote in specific does this is because all your notes will be stored on OneDrive. So OneDrive is basically a cloud storage system and usually when you're in university, they give you an educational account so they have unlimited storage on this drive. And so what that means is that you can write as much notes as you want, sync them across all your devices and never have to worry about running out of space. And the same goes for Notion as well. So yeah, now we can move on to our next section of our video. Okay, so for the third part of the video, I want to show you my note-taking process for our lecture slides from start to finish, just to give you an example, an idea of how to organize it. So what I would do is I would, using OneNote, I would uh, upload the lecture slides into the relevant folders that you see here. So for example, diseases of the stomach would be under the notebook of pathology, under the section of the GIT, and then I'll just add a page for it. So what I'll do is during the lecture itself, I'll just uh, type down things that the lecturer has said that's not already mentioned in the slides or things that I Google and add on there to help me understand what's going on more because sometimes the slides can be quite uh, inadequate in some cases. Um, so anyways, uh, once you finish with the lecture, you should have a bunch of slides that you should roughly be able to understand quite well. And the next step that I do would actually be to um, go through the slides and then create headers here. So you can't see where my finger is pointing, but basically I would look through the slides very briefly and try and get brief headers like this, gastritis, then I'll go into general, and then the further topics under gastritis. And basically you want to have you want to have a rough idea of what you're taking notes from so that when you're making notes uh, later on you have a good idea of where to put all the information rather than just having a bad organization. And the reason why you want to create headers is because sometimes the lecturers may not organize the slides in the best way and so you want to just be able to take information and slot it into the right place so that's easier for you to study later on. Okay, so once you've created the headers, you can then just add in all the details that have been mentioned in the slides. So what sometimes I like to do if I know that it is quite a high yield topic or it's a topic that's very hard to memorize just by understanding, um, what I would do is I would take these notes and convert them into questions and that's when I would create Anki cards. So if you go into uh, the same example of CVS pathology, what I actually did was just go to my CVS, go to the notes that I created for them, and then I'll just convert these into questions. So for example, um, from this chunk of notes here, will be converted into the question, uh, what are the most common causes of myocardial infarction? And then these will be the answers. And then I'll create that into a card and basically do that for all the notes within this section or whatever I deem is important. So anyways, that's just the whole process of what I do generally as far as note taking goes. And now we can move on to the next section of the video. Okay, so for the last part of the video, I want to talk about how you can use your iPad in your note-taking process. Personally, I don't really use it as my primary note-taking device, and that's because I think that writing out your notes is just a lot more inefficient than simply typing it out on your computer. However, 
I still do use it from time to time. For example, when I want to draw diagrams, it's much easier to do it on my iPad. From there, I can just uh, screenshot and send it over to my computer where I'll upload it onto the uh, note-taking apps. Alternatively, you can also use it as a portable studying device when you don't want to bring your computer around. Like I said, you can just uh, sync your notes to OneNote or whatever your preferred note-taking app is and then view it on the go. Anyways, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope this has been helpful to you.